Apples are good. Apples are good. Apples are good. Welcome back. Over the last few episodes, we've been talking about the biological origins of the core phenomena of addiction. We found them in the mammalian midbrain, which has been keeping mammals alive for over a hundred million years. Low dopamine tone at the nucleus accumbens told us about a base state that drives people with low dopamine tone to seek rewards that maybe aren't good for them, but do give them dopamine. And last time we talked about the positive feedback loop between the nucleus accumbens and the ventral tegmental area that causes the reward spike, which can be so high that it actually exhausts the system, causing a crash down below where you started. And that crash below leaves the person with a physical craving for more of the substance rather than satisfaction. But we left an open question. That explanation tells us why someone with addiction gets compulsive use, but it doesn't explain why normal people can have a reward and go on about their life. Let's take a look first at someone with normal dopamine tone. This line is a normal dopamine tone, and this line is the line that represents reward. Remember that this system exists to let us know what's good for us. When a stimulus like good food, getting in out of the rain, sex, or anything else necessary for the survival of our species happens, we get a little spike of dopamine. Anything that causes dopamine across this top line gets coded as necessary and important. The scientific word for that is salience, but it's easier if we just talk about reward. Let's say you eat a really delicious apple. The dopamine release causes endorphin release and on and on to where there's enough to cross the line. And you get the feeling that this was a delicious, rewarding apple. So your midbrain coded, apples are good, necessary, important, keep you alive. You didn't have to think about it. You didn't have to make a moral judgment. It's coded in your midbrain. Apples are good. Eat apples. Now, what about someone with low dopamine tone? Here's a low tone line, and here's the reward line. If you eat that same delicious apple, you actually get a bit more of a spike than the person with the normal tone did. The why of that is a bit complicated for now, but we can get into it later. But even with the higher spike from the apple, it doesn't reach the reward line. The apple doesn't get coded. There's no attachment to apples. But if we give you something that released more dopamine in you, maybe an opioid, or a video game, or a chocolate eclair, for instance, then there's a big spurt of dopamine, causing a big spurt of endorphin, going around and around, causing a big enough spike to reach the reward line. Yes, the system is exhausted, and in the end, you're lower than where you started, but the reward still got coded as necessary and important. So this positive feedback loop between the ventral tegmental area and the nucleus accumbens, this is the origin of the spike that leads to the crash, and it's the crash that leads to the craving. As Dr. Silkworth pointed out in the 1930s, don't take the drug, don't get the spike. You don't get the spike, you don't get the crash. No crash, no craving. So if you don't take the drug, you don't get the craving. He also pointed out, though, that there was another core phenomena, that base state he described as restless, irritable, and discontented, that drove people to use the drug in the first place. So we've now explained the biological origins of both of Dr. Silkworth's core phenomena. There's only one thing left to do. Turns out there's a third core phenomena that he never mentioned. We'll cover that next time. I hope you join me. Until then, be well.